male lions are chasing the lionesses. The lionesses are up ahead of us. The male lions are just to the right. We're going to keep up with the girls. Here come the males. Here come the males. Now this has been going on. We can hear that lions fighting. So we're just going to try to keep up with the females. The males are still running in behind us. Male lions popping out anywhere next to us. We're just trying to keep up with the girls. Hey, we should be seeing them shortly around the next corner. The dawn chorus was interrupted by a cacophony of growls and snarls. We think that the male lions found Nyeleti and Hahani, as well as all the cubs, on the remnants of a kill. They stole it and then proceeded to chase Hahani and Nyeleti. Bucket and the cubs took refuge in the Timberti River system. Ahani and Yuleti managed to avoid the boys and fled up the Reedsbrait riverbed before settling in a thicket and upsetting all the resident primates. It has been an absolutely crazy morning and we were hoping to find the boys hunting and we found them fighting with the lionesses and chasing cubs and the bush was so thick we're covered in holes and thorns and whatnot but a very exciting morning. The lionesses managed to get away from them and uh, we're going to probably try to catch up with them uh, a bit later. I think they're just going to snooze for the rest of the day here. Yeah, they found themselves a nice spot and uh, hopefully we get some more action in a few hours. Since you last joined us on the tale of two mothers, the bush of the Reedsbrake Game Reserve has transformed from dry and barren to gloriously green and lush. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, isn't this wonderful? Um, we're trying something new here. Uh, of course, it's me, it's Brent. Uh, we've got Zander back on camera. Brian running around being assisting VM and VM back in there in the final control. So isn't it great? We've got a, we're sitting outside. It's a beautiful evening here in the low fields of South Africa. Uh, we've tried a bit something different. You can see behind me, we've got lots of little skulls and all sorts of stuff. We've dressed the set. Um, so to speak, as I think that's how the technical term goes. But what we thought now is this is a really great way that we can all enjoy tales 
And hello, trouble. I don't want to play with you now. Um, and 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 this is where we can chat to you about what's going on in Tales. Instead of doing a chat at the end, we're going to do these chats in between the segments. So, does anyone have any questions about what we just saw in that first opening segment of the Tale of Two Mothers? So, forgive me looking down. I'm trying to see your questions and stuff. I just want to say an absolutely massive thank you to everyone um, who's uh, donated on Super Chat. It is amazing. We, we, we really cannot thank you enough for that support. Absolutely incredible. Oh, thank you. My t-shirt. Yes, nice t-shirt. <laughs> Rhino Revolution, of course, that's one of the uh, uh, conservation organizations we work with quite regularly. Um, and then, oh, I didn't even know. Oh, so we've put up a new a camera up in the tree. Um, so that's, that, that's awesome. So we've got a couple of different angles. Um, we've got some torches around just in case the, the porcupines or uh, civet or something arrives close by because they come past you quite frequently. Ah, there we go. Uh, Bob Dorset would like to know, I, I missed a few episodes. Why are they chasing the females? Well, it's, it's quite funny. Yeah? The poor girls, when they've got cubs, um, they'll try to avoid the males as much as possible. They, they're gluttons, they're steel, the kills and stuff like that. And um, that generally, uh, a male lion will have multiple prides and they will move between and stuff like that. However, with these being the only girls, uh, you, you find that the, the boys tend to harass them a lot more. So when they get too close, the girls tend to give them a smack and try to keep them away. Um, and that's, that, that's why. Uh, it's a pain. I mean, those three males can eat a mountain of meat. So the, the females would prefer them not to eat all the meat uh, for, that they would rather keep for themselves and the cubs. Uh, Linda, yes, it does look like one of the lionesses has a scratch. <laughs> Sorry, I've, uh, I've got a Jack Russell with a pink monkey attacking me. Off you go. Um, so, yes. Um, and, and that's normal. That could have come from fighting with the males. It could have come from fighting with her own cubs or, 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 or one of the other lionesses. Uh, just for, for the food. Michael Friedberg, that is an excellent question. So, do, do, do lions in closed populations have more altercations and conflicts um, than a lions in an open system? Probably not. Um, and, and the conflicts are, are going to be a little bit less serious. So, of course, the, those males are not going to try and kill their cubs, or they might, but it's very unlikely. Um, so, it's it's it's... It's, they will have a lot of smaller conflicts, but are less likely to be big sort of conflicts where, where they're likely to kill each other. Uh, Donna, Bucket and BB are doing wonderfully well. Um, they will be a year old next month, so isn't that amazing? So they've grown so much. Um, there we go, let's see. Yes, MGN, the, those lions were on a mission. Those the boys want a mission to keep up with the girls and the girls want a mission to keep away from the boys and uh, the girls luckily enough as it got hotter the boys got lazy and, and sort of plonked down thank you darcy um uh Sinax asking what do you think about the relationship between lions and people we need to help their population so that is a is an ongoing problem with with not only lions but most wild animals and particularly things like predators there's always going to be human conflict, um, uh, and we, we've utilized so much of their space. But I'm not going to tell you too much more about that, because we're actually going to delve into that a little bit later. Um, there we go, Patty, typical male-female society, exactly. Uh, thank you, very strong 46. Um, that's very lovely of you to say. We, we do appreciate educating you, and, and as I said, we, we, we'd really like to focus on a little bit more in depth and, and discuss some of the conservation issues that are happening around these animals at the moment. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, Barbara, would the males be any danger to the cubs, especially if BB spent time with them? Well, BB's too young to really be a threat to them at the moment. Um, it's going to take another sort of year or two uh, before BB would be under pressure. For those who don't know, BB is Bucket's brother um, from the males, and uh, he will probably have to be moved off to another reserve. Uh, one of the other fenced reserves and there's a constant sort of movement between these uh, reserves of things like lions and that and that's to keep the genetics strong 
Um, old Nick, are there any plans to introduce new lines into the area? Not currently, but as I said, we're going to discuss that a little bit later. So I think I'm going to send, let's go back to Vim, who's going to take us into the next segment of the tale of two mothers. It's always special to see the transformation from the browns and greys of the dry season to the emerald green of the wet season. It's a time of rebirth. The impalas are the first to land. However, it's not always easy being a baby impala. We discovered a lone little impala that had been separated from the herd, possibly during the absolute panic of a hunt by a predator. It was wandering around, calling in distress, searching for mom, and its panicked calls attracted a black-backed jackal. Luckily for this little one, a young male from the herd was attracted by its distress calls. And this story had a happy ending. For many other baby impala, it's not the same. The wildebeest are the next to carve. The lovely ladies, Hahani and Yeleti, have been focusing their hunting on baby wildebeest for the last month or two, picking off the unfortunate little fellows to feed their permanently hungry brood. This has seen them spending time in the northern reaches of the Reedsbrate Game Reserve. Oh, you can see there's no tracks here. I saw where the tracks went. It's just really, really thick. So I'm just trying to go around in case the lions are sleeping in one of the thickets close by. Try to pick up the tracks on the other side of the thicket. So they might have made a kill. Look at this fresh stuff. They have made a kill. Wildebeest earlier today. Last year's baby, so about a year old wildebeest. And for a pride of this many, it's not going to last long. Two adult lionesses. 
six cubs, baby wildebeest or yearling wildebeest. And you can see there's almost nothing left. These tracks are really, really fresh. Actually, just see how the moisture is staying. You can see a track from earlier in the day, how it's dried, and how in these quite a few. It's still wet. spot on we when we heard the suckling was about 50 meters from here on the other side of this little erosion area and we decided not to walk any closer for fear of scaring them and um, just get a quick glimpse through the bushes that we have tracked and found the pride now, just try and get us into a good position where we can film them. Those buckets, you know, they're coming to us. Yeah. Hello, Troubles. So really, really awesome. We've been tracking for about, it was about two hours. Uh, majority of that on foot. And as I said, we got very close. We heard which is the sound of the smallest lion cub suckling. Uh, so Nyleti's cubs were having a drink and we actually heard them from about 50 or 60 meters away through the thick bush. So we had a really good idea where they were. We didn't want to disturb them. So we went back, fetched the car and, uh, and we're being treated to a brilliant late afternoon lion sighting here on Leadwood Big Game Estate. I couldn't be happier. There's nothing more fulfilling than being able to track a big cat on foot, find it and not disturb them and be able to come enjoy a sighting from a safari vehicle. Every time we're with this pride, it's special. And getting to watch the cubs grow is a true privilege. And I know we shouldn't have favorites, but for VM and I, Bucket has to be our most favorite lion of all. And it's hard to believe that just under a year ago, we played a small part in ensuring her survival.
Isn't that amazing? And it was such a great afternoon. Vim and I had tracking our favorite pride of lions. And um, it was very special. I see there were quite a lot of comments asking about guns and firearms and why we don't walk with one. So, strangely enough, it's, it's, it's a quite a complicated, um, well, not really, but it's, it's, it's a semi-complicated little discussion. So, I, I actually don't believe in carrying firearms when in a bushwalk. Um, I trust my, my years of experience and skills in the bush to ensure I don't get into trouble um, that I would need to, unfortunately, have to shoot something. So it's, it's, it is a personal preference, certain people do like to carry a firearm, but um, if it, something really wants to get you and the lion's coming at 21 meters a second, it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to do anything, even if you've got a firearm. So uh, a gun also gives people a false sense of security. And there was a perfect example. Um, if someone was carrying a gun, they might have felt a little bit braver or whatnot and might have pushed that situation to try go closer to the lions on foot uh, rather than going back to the vehicle because we'd already found them we could hear them um, so I, I use my stick I, will, I just pick up random sticks um, and if they do charge or whatnot I just generally throw a stick at them and shout at them and that uh, does does the job normally um, and that does the job with black rhino hippo elephant lions um, I've thrown sticks um, in slightly hairy situations a few times oh thank you Patty um, and Marcy um, and then I saw someone was asking uh, what is the makeup so BB is the only boy all the other cubbies are little girls so Bucket and f has got four uh, little I suppose half sisters yeah four little half sisters um, so yes four little half sisters um, so a BB is the only boy now of course being a small fence reserve um, there will be some management issues uh, as we get later on and of course we have to um, deal with that because we can't just have an ever exploding lion population um, because the reserve is fenced and it eventually would become a problem we'd have too many lions for the amount of prey species we have but we are going to chat about that a little bit more let's just see um, uh, I love snacks um, what happened a year ago with the cub uh, well, you're going to have to go, uh, once we finished here, is go back into our YouTube playlist. And there's a playlist called The Male Lions Adopt a Cub. And you can follow the whole story of what happened with Bucket uh, a year ago. So, very, very interesting story. Um, and Zander is actually down here because he's making a nice movie out of it. <laughs> and Zander's smiling at me from behind the camera. Um, Marcy, what will generally happen um, this year is the boys are quite young. Uh, and we'd like to keep the three males around for a bit. Uh, so what we will do is at well not this year um, with BB but at some point BB will probably have to move off the reserve to a, a new reserve where he can go get his own ladies uh, but uh, with 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 the females um, particularly Hahani and Yaleti um, they will they will get um, fixed now the reason you you do that to the females and not the males uh, the males it's a permanent procedure you cannot unfix them whereas the females you can unfix at a later stage so they will get stitched um, and fixed so they were not going to be able to have any babies of course with um, Bucket and the other cubs they've still well Bucket's got about another two years to go before she'll have to get fixed um, and obviously the, the little ones even longer to go so that is how um, we'll manage the, 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 the lion population or the management of the Respect Game Reserve is, are going to manage the lion population going forward. So, Noah, stop barking, you. That sounds like it could be a porcupine or something. That's an angry bark. Um, so, Michael, no, the, the young females won't be moved. They will stay with, uh, with their natal pride and they will stay on on there what generally happens is you try to keep their numbers down and and, and I'll, once all those females are adults we'll be looking at what's it um four five six seven seven lines a nice size pride um perfect sort of size for the um for the reserve um and uh, and as i said the reason you don't uh, fix the males is because if you fix the males it's a permanent procedure and that cannot be undone with the females can be undone so what will probably happen is when those boys get quite old um, they'll they will either they will probably be moved or we might bring in some younger males that can uh, sort of take over the ter territory more naturally um, but we'll see see how that goes and that's quite a long way away 
There we go. My dad is there. The lionesses will have a, uh, a, a temporary hormonal implant implant put in subcutaneously under the skin. So a horm hormonal implant. So it actually won't even be stitching. Thanks, Dad. Tom, uh, the herbivore populations are are are, are controlled. Uh, there, oh, ah. um, there are some, um, there are there are culling, and certain animals numbers are kept down. But uh, the lions and cheetahs and leopards and hyenas also obviously play quite an important role in that. So there's actually very little management. But yes, certain animals like impala and stuff do need to be do need to be controlled. As again, so we don't have an overpopulation, uh, which would cause overgrazing and and degradation of the, the soils and all sorts of things like that. <laughs> there we go. Everyone's saying hi to my dad. Um, yeah, so as I said, we, we don't walk with um, rifles. My dad actually taught me how to walk in the bush and he doesn't walk with one either. And he's uh, been doing it for well over 40 years and he's never had the need to... Um, get into a bad bad enough situation as I said if you control the situation you don't take chances it's the best way to stay safe and you don't need a big gun to do that okay let's see um, Rosemary says it makes me a little sad uh, though managing the population is important it is important yeah it would be lovely to have cubs all the time but of course for the greater good of the whole reserve um, the, the population does need to be managed Okay, so I think we've covered that all. Now we're going to do a little bit of a flashback next and send you back into the past uh, since we're discussing how to manage lion populations and reserves and some of the problems that we might face and that we have faced. So let's go have a look at that. Someone know where to go when she walks with no aim. I've traveled, learned, I've loved, and I've lost, yet still I am the same. I passed an empty chapel, I was far from the warm glow inside. I don't believe in any religion, but the emptiness made me cry. If I could just get some inspiration And enter through my transformation Then every little thing in my life would be so beautiful And I'd be satisfied No one should have to feel this way Something out there for me, baby, and I know my time is dear. modern world with human populations exploding and unutilized land at a premium. 
Small fenced reserves such as the Reedsprait will play an important role in keeping areas under wildlife as opposed to farming or other commercial ventures. Fences are an important tool in ensuring both the animals that live within the reserves and the surrounding people and community safety, with the very human notion that good walls make good neighbours. This poses a completely new set of management issues for the fenced reserves. Unlike open systems, these lions have a very hard rather than porous boundary. But being male lions, they will always continue to test these boundaries, so constant vigilance is needed. With only a single male lion protecting potentially available females in the neighboring reserve, our three boys are continuously looking for a gap in the fence. Peter Panda, Peter Panda, sorry I had a moment there, I was laughing at Peter Panda's comment. Whose fence is it? Whose fence is it? It's mine, it's mine, it's mine. <laughs> Very clever Peter Panda. Very clever indeed. So, um, there we go, that's Dad saying there now. That's, that is the boundary fence with another reserve next door. Um, and the lions as, uh, have about 15,000 acres that they're wondering, which is about the about the size of a, a territory they would normally have in the wild. Obviously different areas, depending on prey availability, etc, etc. Um, and females and stuff depend on the size of the uh, the lion's territories. So it was, it, it's, it's quite often for them, uh, it's quite common for them to be walking down those fences, patrolling, as they would patrol out in an open system. As I said, however, it's a very hard boundary as opposed to a, a changing boundary. And there is only one... Um, only one one lion in the next door, uh, one male lion in the next door property. Um, but so yes, oh, we've got lots of questions. Um, well, thank you very much, Donna. That's very nice of you to say. I find your videos better than a lot of the documentaries. <coughs> That's very very nice. Uh, Marcy, we traverse the Ritzbrate Game Reserve, which is made up of Cayenne Glovel, um, Ledwood Big Game Estate, and Blowbunk. Uh, Blowbunk is the the biggest portion in the middle. Um, so there's lots of space for them to roam, as we're saying. So, uh, however, male lions are going to keep testing, particularly because there's another male on the other side. So they're going to keep roaring and calling and and trying to get to the females on the other side, because of course male lions would love to have more than one pride of females uh, in uh, to to control. So it, it is quite interesting to watch. Um, and as we've spoken about in in this modern world, uh, fenced reserves and 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 things like that are a reality, and we'd much rather have. Uh, a fenced reserve rather than that area being used for cattle or farming or development or anything else like that. Okay, let's see. Heidi Swiss would like to know, would it be easy uh, to relocate the young lion to another reserve? It is, lions are one of the more, uh, the easier animals to dart and transport. It's, it's, it's not too much of a big deal. Uh, and um, <laughs> We've, we've darted and transported those three boys uh, a few, well, a few times more than we would like to. But I'm not going to go into too much detail about that because, um, there we go, uh, because we're going to discuss it again a little bit later. Mary just says, I was in a drive where we discovered a group of five male lions had gotten through the fence to a disease-free buffalo breeding farm. Well, I hope they didn't eat too many buffalo. That's quite expensive um, if, if those lions got to chomp down. On, on the buffalo and there we go and there we go my dad has said reed sprite means the reed stream and that's the main big river that we saw the lionesses wandering through uh wandering down earlier on in the first segment okay wait is riding is, is lion poo really as smelly as you all say it's worse 
if you don't have a strong, strong stomach and you drive over Lion Poo, uh, you might lose your breakfast. It's a really unpleasant, un unpleasant smell. Can you imagine the stuff they eat? And they quite happily eat rotting meat regularly. So Lion Poo is very smelly. Uh, all the carnivores poo is very, very smelly. Okay. Um, so we're going to say not too much more about this and uh, see what the boys got up to a little bit. Well, not that, but well, almost a year ago. Maintaining the fence is a full-time job and one can't have eyes on all areas at all times. An early rain this season led to our three boys finding a gap in the fence. The three boys broke out and tried to kill the neighboring reserve single male lion. Fortunately, we were able to dart and bring them back before they caught the solo warrior. It is always a privilege to be up close and personal with the big cat and when the lions are sedated it gives us a chance to look at these cats in a completely different way. It's fascinating to see how these boys have grown since their arrival on the Reedsport Game Reserve. Very few male lions have sired six cubs by their age. And their development has definitely been aided by the fact that there are no older males which has meant that they have developed far faster than they would have in an open system. And I can't wait to see how big they're gonna be when they're all grown up. On a slightly more humorous note, when a male lion is waking from anaesthetic, he sort of looks like that friend we all have, all know and love, who stayed for one too many at the local pub. It is always quite funny watching a big cat wake up from a, a, a cocktail of, of, of narcotics. Um, and people asking, do you have to be registered and stuff to use that? So in South Africa, only a vet 
is able to to utilize those drugs and have access to those drugs of course those are kept under in very strict conditions and lock, locked away and whatnot but so you have to be a vet or a vet nurse to administer or use those those drugs um isn't that <laughs> it was quite funny so they went off to go try to sort out the, the the single male next door and take over his ladies um unfortunately fortunately for him we managed to get to the lions before then and bring them back because otherwise it would have been uh, a disaster for him because uh, those three boys against a single male, even though he is a bit older, um, would have been a catastrophic. Now, as you can see, how much their manes have grown already. Now, that, that, is, that is the really, really fascinating thing. That they probably have developed manes and, and, and behavior a lot earlier than they would have if they'd been in an open system purely because there is no other older males around. Um... W. James, what are my thoughts on non-endemic species like tigers being introduced into these fence reserves? Um, quite strong, and the answer is they shouldn't be. Uh, in my personal opinion, of course, um, everyone is welcome to their opinion. But um, yes, I should say if there's a breeding program in China or in India or in Asia where the tigers are from, they, yes, then they should definitely have tigers. But putting tigers um, and exotic cats into African reserves is, is not a good idea, in my personal opinion. Um, yeah, I feel quite strongly about that. I don't want to go into too much detail about that. Um, let's just find, there we go, questions. Um, Erlene, the collar, oh, is it the collars don't bother them, but it seems that with the mane it would be more of a bother. Um, so, yes, I mean, the collar is very light if you're a male line. Um, as you would have noticed uh, in some of the earlier earlier footage from uh, the collars and no, the collar the male lions are no longer collared and neither is her hiney. so the collars are off the lines at the moment um, and they're nice and settled now so we don't need to monitor them as much and of course that means we've got to do a lot more tracking it's a bit harder to find them but that's half the fun of being out there well thank you Sibui. Yes, so, um, yeah, really, really interesting stuff. So if you guys got any more questions about the lines. Now, as I said, you, you, you can't watch everywhere. Uh, but fortunately, um, the management of the reserve and anti-poaching and the next door reserves, everyone is quite vigilant, especially along that boundary where, that they share with um, that other reserve where they've only got the single male. So if they do get out, we generally are on it quite quickly, uh, even now that they don't have the collars. Um, I saw a nice question. I've lost it, of course. There's lots of comments about the lions having too much uh, apple juice. Marcy, um, are the fences electric? Yes. Um, if I remember correctly, I think it's about 9,000 volts um, in those fences. And so it does give them a bit of a wallop. Uh, but a fence is, will only stop them to a point. Um, if they do hit a fence or any animal hits a fence with enough speed, even an impala, they are able to go through it. But generally, the, the, the electric fence works quite well in stopping them go through. And then I saw something. Um, I see that no, the Rich Boat doesn't have any social pages. You can follow Kaya and Lawville Manor House um, and Ledwood Big Game Estate. Those are the, the two sort of social pages that uh, are about the, the, the uh, that are about that reserve. There we go. <laughs> My dad's ahead of me. There, it's exactly that. They, they've been socially castrated. Um, socially castrated by dominant males outside of a fence reserve like this. That's why they've developed so quickly. And Michael, yes, I, they're, they're just over four now. Uh, Sinak, yes, if uh, there was an unrelated male lion and he came into the area or whatnot, he would definitely kill the cubs. As with those three boys, if they managed to get hold of any of that single male's cubs, they would kill them. So, um, inf infanticide, infanticide is very common in lions. Um, and what happens as soon as those cubs are killed, it brings the females into estrus quite quickly. Now, one of the really interesting things with a, a lot of the big cats is when a new coalition takes over initially and infanticides happened and the cubs have been killed, the females will actually sometimes go into two or three false estruses um, to basically, they'll still mate and everything, but they generally won't produce cubs from that mating. And that is to try ensure that they're not going to put a lot of effort into creating new cubs and these new males that have come in and killed their cubs are not going to hang around for too long. So that's generally 
only the second or third Easter cycle after a coalition has taken over an area or a pride will there actually be cubs born. Lisa Marie, uh, no, the males are not going to react negatively to the females once they stop coming to estrus. Uh, male lions react generally the same, pretty much, and they still harass them and steal their kills and do all that type of stuff. So yes, they, they, they will. They, I don't think they're going to. Haha, um... <laughs> KB, KB7. Did they have to dart Brent when they had to go fix his ankle? Uh, yes. Well, I wish they had darted me because then I wouldn't have been awake in the ambulance. Uh, but yes, they did. They did dart me when I went under for the the, the surgery. Um, Simon, that's a interesting. If you put lion dung around um, your house or lodge, will it uh, stop uh, baboons and other primates coming in? Uh, maybe for a little while, but I mean, it, it, I don't think so. Though one of the funniest things I've seen with lion dung, however, is and I've driven over lion dung and then driven past a buffalo. The buffalo does panic quite a bit. Uh, Marcy, my la my ankle is actually great. It's grand at the moment, um, and so yes, no no problem. And let's see, have we got any more questions on the Lions, guys? Oh, so we we came second. We lost in the finals of the dodgeball uh, tournament. Don't worry, there will be some more videos and stuff of that coming shortly. Um, CNAC, yes, I have problems with. Well, I used to have problems with vervet monkeys at my house. Now I don't. I have a claw. Uh, who sees it as her job to keep all vivid monkeys far away from my kitchen. Uh, Lisa, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, um, maybe Vim or Charles can have a look uh, at that. Bob, excellent question. Is one of those lions the leader? Now, a lot of people always assume uh, and uh, make the mistake that one particular male lion is a coalition is uh, is more dominant than the others however the dominance actually changes in a coalition constantly who's the most hungry uh, who's got a sore leg who's got a who's been beaten up the, the the least or the most or who's got the fullest belly so the the male lion coalition's hierarchy is constantly in flux and the reason for that is it also gives all generally all the males a chance to mate with the females and stuff like that so uh, yes yeah, so there, there is no there is a leader at a per well, not a leader, but the more dominant of, of the lions at a certain time. But that, that is in constant change depending on a lot of different uh, circumstances. Um, Robert, do the male lions have names? Uh, <laughs> yes, they do. Um, I think the, the guys on, on Reach Braid call them um, mullet, notch, and collar. <laughs> so not the most invented name but mullet notch and collar and you can pretty much work out from their names who's who and so mullet's got that very small little sort of mohawk but he's got long at the back collar you can actually still see where the collar was there's a little bit of the hair hasn't grown back and notch has got quite distinct notches in his ears there we go exactly mary as your house cats do the dominance changes depending on who's most hungry who's the most angry uh, etc. So it, it all just depends. Okay, this has been absolutely splendid and I can't thank you enough. Um, I'm just going to ask Viam a question. Um, is there any more after this, Viam, live chats? Was this my last little patch? This is my last segment. Now, this this is the last last of the live. However, there is more coming straight after this. But I'm going to say, start saying my goodbyes. I'll take a couple more questions um, before we go and comments. So please send in your questions and comments. So we'd love to hear from you before we say goodbye. While I'm waiting for the last couple of um, questions, I'm just going to remind you guys, please um, like, share and subscribe, Painted Dog TV. Also go across to our stationary live bush cams um, on YouTube, which is our other channel, and that is Live Bush Cams by PaintedDog.tv. Um, and if you would like to become a patron, I'm sure Vim or Charles or someone is about to put the links on there. But actually, they're all in the description. Um, uh, if you would like to become a patron of Painted Dog TV, and again, thank you so much for the super chats, donations. We really appreciate it. Um, we're gonna hopefully uh, going to be doing. Um, oh yes, I nearly forgot. So we are working on the finding of Hosanna. Now our patrons know about this. Uh, we're working on getting access to the areas where Hosanna is to try and go film and make a movie about him. And there's going to be more information coming about that. Um, once I've secured permission, I don't want to get everyone too excited until I've got the permission. But what we're going to do is we're actually probably going to do um, a crowdfunding um, 
push for that to raise the funds to get us access to go there um, and then the people who have helped fund the search for Hosanna movie will be have access to exclusive content that will not be available to everyone else um, once we are done making the movie you will get live updates if we get it right as I said I don't want to get people too too much too excited I still need to make sure I can guarantee us access to the properties that Hosanna is in but it is very exciting so we might be off in search of leopards. We haven't filmed leopards in a while, so it could be quite exciting. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that's, that's one of the big projects. And as I said, um, go have a look at our Teespring store. Uh, hopefully we'll be putting up some more swag shortly. Um, and don't forget to be a patron. And please like, share, and subscribe both live bush cams by PainterDog.tv and PainterDogTV, uh, the main YouTube page. It's been great. It's been grand. And since I was talking about a spotty cat, we're going to... Going to go across to Mabai Bai next and of course this Tale of Two Mothers has been catching up with the lions and all their dramas uh, but now on the next Tale of Two Mothers we're going to be focusing on Mabai Bai who's actually proven very very difficult to find um, her collar is still on um, it is it is is it is not working but we're going to be focusing on finding Mabai Bai for the next couple of weeks and we will hopefully have a very similar episode to this catching up with Mabai Bai the beautiful cheetah mother on that note, I'm going to say goodbye from Vim, Eggsy, Brian, myself, Chloe, who stopped barking finally, uh, and send you across to have a look at when we last saw my bye-bye.